Can one week of training significantly improve your number of CTAPs? Well, PERT test can answer this question by comparing your performance before and after this week. So let's learn how to produce this statistically rich plot using only one simple command, how to interpret all these results and see what happens if you use a wrong test. BSDA package provides a fitness dataset with a CETA performance of 9 people before and after one week of training. To see whether training makes any difference, we'll calculate this difference by subtracting performance before from performance after and compare our mean difference to zero. If training didn't help, our mean difference would be equal to zero, which becomes our null hypothesis. If training made a difference, our mean difference would be lower or hopefully higher than zero, which becomes our alternative hypothesis. And since this difference is more important than paired samples themselves, we only need to check the normality of the difference, but not of both samples. Checking normality is important for choosing a correct test, otherwise we could get completely wrong result. We'll see what happens if we choose a wrong test in a moment. Until then, a big p-value of the Shapiro-Wilk normality test indicates that our difference is normally distributed. That's why we need a parametric pair t-test to compare two paired samples. If the difference would have been not normally distributed, we would have taken a non-parametric Wilcoxon test, which you can learn about from previous video. For pair tests, the data needs to be sorted, so that the first observation of the before group pairs with the first observation of the after group. If our data is sorted, we are ready to compute the test. And the best way to compute our test is the ggWithinStats function from ggStatsPlot package, which needs only four arguments. First, our data, fitness, then x as the grouping variable, y are the numbers of setups and the type of statistical approach. Since our data was normally distributed, we choose a parametric test and GD within stats automatically knows that it has to take per t test. Such simple command results in this statistically rich and publication ready plot. Now let's interpret the results. Students' t-statistics is the measure of similarity between compared samples, measured in units of standard error. The further t-value is from zero, the more different are the samples. But t-value by itself cannot say how far from zero is far enough to conclude that this difference is significant. That's why we need a p-value. Our p-value of 0023 tells us that our difference is significant. It shows a moderate evidence against the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Particularly, our group of 9 students will make 2 setups more on average after one week of training. But is a difference of only 2 setups large? P-value cannot tell that. A p-value only tells you that there is an effect from training, but not how strong this effect is. Fortunately, GD within stats provides hedges G as the measure of the effect size, which shows how large the effect of training is. Hedges G is interpreted in the same way as Cohen's D effect size, but outperforms Cohen's D for small samples, like 9 in our example. Our effect size of 0.83 is large and tells us that the increase in performance of only two sit-ups is actually a lot. But it doesn't seem like a lot, so we have to double-check it. For that, GG within stats provides the Bayesian difference between our samples with 95% highest density intervals, which is conceptually similar to the difference of two sit-ups we see on the plot and the bias factor, which is conceptually similar to p-value. Our bias factor of minus 1.13 indicates a substantial evidence for the alternative hypothesis that training actually did make a difference and we now make substantially more sit-ups than before, which is in line with the frequency statistics on the top of the plot. Now, what happens if we choose a wrong test? And there are two ways things can go wrong. First, if we are lazy to check the normality, we'll go straight to the non-parametric paired Wilcoxon test. Here, a p-value almost failed to reject the null hypothesis when we used the threshold of 005 to determine significance. 
and the effect size is lower, which means our study would be underpowered. Let me show you what I mean. The effect size from Wilcoxon test has 2% lower power, which increases the chances to miss an important discovery. And in our example, with a p-value close to the significance threshold, we almost missed it. But that's not all. We could be even more wrong if we took a not pair t test, because we would get completely opposite result, namely that the effect of training is small and not significant. This wrong result could even seem plausible since the difference of only two setups is so small. So how can such a small difference be significant in a pair test then? Well, it lies in the nature of the pair test, which does not compare averages of two samples, but compares a mean difference between those samples to zero. And if we look at the difference which shows individual performance of students, we'll see that 7 out of 9 improve their performance, some of them by a lot, so that the group in general was successful and our significant p-value actually makes sense. Interestingly, if we test our mean difference against zero using one sample t-test and compare the t-statistics, p-value and the effect size to our paired t-test, we'll see identical result. Thus, our offensive paired sample test is actually one sample test on the difference. And if you want to know more about one sample tests and how to interpret all these numbers, check out this video.